Hey, welcome everyone to another painting video from myself, Darren, I'm part of the Twisted Dice team. If you haven't checked us out already, please do. Uh, just look under YouTube under Twisted Dice. You can also find us on Facebook. And we also do a live stream every Wednesday night from 9.30 on Twisted Dice TV. So in this video today, I'm gonna to be taking you through a speed guide in using the new contrast paint and painting a goth. Uh, which was uh, requested by for myself painting a orc in one of my earlier videos. So as as requested, I have so done so. Now the goth actually took me a little bit longer to paint than the previous orc uh, by about 10, 15 minutes longer, and that's more to, because of the some of the techniques I do towards the end. Now contrast. Now this this orc was mainly done with contrast paint. Uh, I still stand by that contrast paint is an absolutely awesome paint for beginners and the reason why I say that for because I know there's a lot of hate for contrast paint and I know a lot of people don't like it and the effects that it gives um, but the reason why I say contrast paint is cool now if you're like me I have a habit of buying, pro buying GW product well not necessarily just, G just G Games Workshop but I do have a lot of plastic lying around that's never been built purely because I don't have the time to build those models up and to and to paint them. Uh, and unfortunately, I'm not one of those type of players that likes to play with gray models. I'd rather see some color on the models than none at all. And this is why I say that contrast paint is really, really cool. Now, with contrast paint, I have introduced this to my little girl, uh, and it's been absolutely awesome to see her response with the contrast paint. Now, the it is not you can't use it the same way as um, as well, how GW uh, have sold it to straight out of the pot, pot. And the reason I say that for if you use some of the darker colours, you've got to use some of that medium to actually mix that in with the contrast paint itself. Otherwise, it doesn't give you the effect that you're kind of looking for, which is a shame. But it's not a problem because it's still a very easy paint to you know to get on the model. Uh, and I've said in before that the reason why I like contrast paint, I love the way that it goes onto the model in pretty much one coat. You can do like if you go like for instance the black, if you hit the black straight onto the model, I can just go straight out of the pot and it goes down on the on the actual model itself quite nicely. And I like that. And I know a lot of people don't like it, but every paint has its own purpose. Um, if you use contrast paint on its own, you can get some really cool effects. Some of the stuff I've done so far, I've been really, really happy with. Um, I know it's not gonna, it's never gonna win me Golden Demon. I know I'm not gonna get, um, you know, top painted or anything like that at all. But every paint has its per has its place. And for me, contrast paint is one of those paints that's gonna be able to. A, get your models out very, very quickly. So if you've got a tournament coming up and you know you've got to paint 30 Guardsmen or 70 Pink Horrors or Plague you know, plague Bearers, Contrast Paint is going to allow you to get through, smash through that horde very, very quickly. And that's one of the things I love about Contrast Paint because it does allow you to smash through armies very, very quickly. Um, and don't get me wrong, you can do some, re I've seen some really, really cool stuff been done with Contrast Paint so far. And some of the, you know, some real cool effects. And I think at the moment we're still at the early stages of contrast paint. And as time goes on, I think we'll start seeing some more cool effects coming from it. Anyway, so no further ado, let's just get straight onto this. Um, if you haven't already, uh, we are. I am part of the Twisted Dice team. Uh, I will drop a comment link down below. Uh, if you haven't checked us out before, please do. Uh, we do a lot of battle reports every Friday. And if you haven't already, we are streaming live every Wednesday night from 9.30 onwards, where we talk about pretty much anything hobby. And the cool thing is we do get some random guests on as well uh, to come along and actually chat about you know what's going on in the community. So if you haven't already, please do check us out on those two platforms. And we are on Facebook as well. Just find us out on uh, as Twisted Dice. And on Twitch, it's Twisted Dice TV because some monkey has already stolen Twisted Dice, which is a shame, but hey, it is what it is. Let's get on with the video. So first of all, I undercoated the model itself using the Citadel Grey Seer. So the two main colours that I'm going to be using on this is going to be the Plague Bearer Flesh and the Orc Flesh. Now the Plague Bearer's Flesh is going to be used for the higher highlight 
of the actual model itself so picking out the high tones of the flesh and then the orc flesh is going to be more for the darker areas Now hopefully what you have noticed that when I've put down the Plague Bearer's Flesh, I've actually mixed a little bit of the of the Orc Flesh in with the Plague Bearer's Flesh just to darken it up slightly. So straight up we're going to be using the Plague Bearer's Flesh and this is just to go for all the higher parts of the actual mus the muscles on the actual Orc itself. So all the highlights of the actual face, we're going to be going in with those first. A little bit different from normal. Um, when you're painting normal stuff, you normally go dark to, dark to light, but with contrast, you've got to go light to dark. So next up, I'm going to be going with the mixture of the Plague Bearer's Flesh with the Orc Flesh, and now I'm just going for the mid-tones of the actual Orc's Flesh itself. Now I'm looking to go straight in with the Orc Flesh and now I'm just going to be targeting the dark tones of the flesh itself. So looking for all the shadow parts where the sun or the light won't be hitting onto the actual flesh itself. Next up we use snake bite leather and this was applied to all the highlighted areas of the cloth. I then applied a second coat of the snake bite leather just to darken up the actual cloth itself. Wildwood was then mixed in with the snake bite leather just to make it a little bit darker to apply onto the cloth into more of the shadow areas. Next up, my favourite colour, Templar Black, was then applied to all the areas that I'm going to either darken up to black armour or that I'm going to be using or turning into metallic.
Like a proper amateur, I decide to put my massive great big melon in front of the camera, blocking off what I'm doing. So I do apologize, but what I did apply was the graphound orange, and this was to the highest highlight points of the banner. And then following up with the Blood Angels red, and that was to go into the darker parts of the bottom part of the actual banner itself. Grey Seer was then applied to the model. At the moment still got that loving for the Iron Warriors base colour and I'm applying this now to all the metal areas of the orc itself. Iron Break was then used for all the highlights on all the metal parts. For the checkered markings, I started off with a grey sear base. Next up from the game color range, we used a little bit of dead white 
and this was just to brighten up the, the markings. Just to tidy up the actual markings themselves, just going back in with the black templar and it's just to sharpen up the edges and sharpen up the lines. Lead Belcher was then applied to the model using a sponge and this was just to create some battle damage and some chipping of the paint. I would highly recommend not overdoing this stage otherwise you will take away on what you're trying to achieve and all you're looking for this point is just to create that little bit of battle damage where the armour would have scraped up against something. Not going to bore you how to do the base because you've probably seen this too many times already a lot of my videos. Um, all I've gone in with next is then picked out all the bone parts, the teeth with wraith bone and then just going in with the skeleton horde just to pick out the, just going in with the shading part of the actual bone itself and that's just going straight from the pot. I'm really pleased on the way this models came out using the contrast paint. As I said before, contrast on its own is not going to win you best painted, but what it will do, it will help you smash out an army very, very quickly. If you enjoyed this, this tutorial, if you could be so kind to hit that like and subscribe, it does help me out massively and I really do appreciate it. By hitting the bell, you will be notified of any more painting guides coming up from myself. So really important that you make sure you smash that bell. Thanks once again for watching this and hopefully I will catch you all again soon on my next painting guide. Thanks again. See you all soon.